Welcome to another episode of Estate Planning Nightmares and how to avoid them. This is the show which highlights the importance of estate planning and why everyone needs to do it. And of course, the unfortunate consequences of what happens far too often if people have not planned. I'm your host, John Braddock, the author of Click Here When I Die and the founder of My Life and Wishes, The Legacy Vault, an online planning and document storage solution created to make things easier for those you love. Today, I am thrilled to introduce my very special guest, Jackie Cara, the founder of Cara Law, located in Garden City, New York. Before we dive in, let me tell you a little bit about Jackie. She's a graduate of St. John's Law School, and after spending several years as a trial attorney and litigator, Jackie had twins, born prematurely with special needs. Two years later, she welcomed a third child and knew that going back to litigation and trial work would not probably be what would best serve her family and their particular needs. After meeting with many families, just like hers, and navigating the world of early intervention, school services, the need for planning for her own children and their future, she decided to dedicate her career to helping other families like her own to make sure that they're able to pave the way to bright futures for themselves, for the families, and their children. Jackie founded Car Law, first focusing on guardianship matters and special need planning services, and then later expanding into elder law, Medicaid planning, and all facets of estate planning. Today, Cara Law, again located in Garden City, New York, helps families navigate the decision-making that goes into creating a plan that works for each family's unique goals, challenges, and their wishes. Jackie is able to bring her own unique experience of raising her own family to each matter, making working with her a truly personalized experience. So whether you're a young family making decisions about choosing proper guardians for your children, creating trusts to protect your assets should the unthinkable happen, maybe a family uh, planning for the needs for a child with special needs or a family preparing for retirement and concerned about long-term care costs. Well, Jackie is here to help you navigate all of those life milestones. Welcome, Jackie. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us today. So let's get rolling here. You know, I always love talking about passion. You know, the why behind people uh, do what they do. What gets us up in the morning and, and keeps us excited, right? Can you share about, uh, you know, the transition that you made from shifting from litigating to estate planning? Sure. So, um, you know, I had a plan like everybody has a plan, right? I was going to have one baby and I was a, a trial attorney. I was in court every day and I was, was going to have one baby and go back to doing that. And um, that's not what happened. I had twins and my twins were born very prematurely and they were in the hospital for a long time and they had special needs. So they had, you know, tons of services. They had early intervention physical therapy, it became very clear very quickly that they really needed, you know, a lot of special attention. And, um, you know, we had a really unique situation on our hands. That was not what we were expecting, but, um, you know, it was a wonderful adventure anyway. And I realized going back to being a trial attorney and a litigator was not what I wanted to do. It was just, you know, I always felt, you know, I was, I was working for large corporations. And while there's an accomplishment in winning, for sure, there's a sense of, of accomplishment in winning a case, you're not really helping people. You know, so now I have these these two babies, you know, th that really, you know, need so much help. And I'm meeting other families similarly situated. And I'm in this situation where I, you know, I have this law degree and I'm positioned so I can really help families. And I'm learning all of the ways in which I can really help prepare my own family and my own children for to succeed in the future. And I can share that with that. This is so much more meaningful than, you know, working for a large corporation. <laughs> and, you know, it just felt like like a purpose had been handed to me. And so, 
you know, it kind of, as they got a little bit older, became clear to me that this was what I wanted to do. So I started out doing special needs planning, really learning my way through my own family and helping other families. And then um, working on a lot of guardianship cases, helping parents whose kids were transitioning to young adulthood. And, um, and then as my kids grew, my practice grew into other areas of estate planning. So I could continue helping families to really get through life's milestones. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it, it's interesting, you know, being a litigator, I mean, it's all about fighting, right? Yes. And, uh, you know, day in and day out, it's a fight and we're going to prepare for the fight. And, um, you know, state planning, I just love because it's so proactive and it's about preventing fighting, really, at the end yes, of the day. Very right? much so. That's the goal is to prevent, fight, prevent problems, prevent fighting, prevent uncertainty. Yeah. You know, that, that's exactly what. I, you know, want to help families do is, is prevent at the most difficult times in life. I want to have prevented all of those problems. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, that's interesting because as you know, I talk to a lot of estate planning attorneys and everyone has their unique whys. They, you know, do what they do. A lot of them uh, have done other uh, practice areas previously in transition due to their own life events, but I can't think of anyone I'd, rather have helped me if I have a special needs child as an example than an estate planning attorney who has two of them because <laughs> you know all the unique needs and you know you know I don't know what questions to ask myself right to to plan but you know the questions to ask me uh, so that we build out a, a, a proper trust as well as a supplemental needs trust so Yes. I, you know, I recently was working with a client and he called me and he was so upset and frustrated and, and he, he was, I don't want to say he was taking it out on me, but I could hear his frustration in the call. And, and as he was yelling at me, um, I could hear in his voice that the frustration was a feeling that his child was being left behind. Hmm. You know, he just felt like having this child who had so many needs, the child was being left behind. in school, in services, in, in everything going. And we're dealing with the court and the court sometimes moves slow. And he felt that with the courts. He said, you know, it was one more thing. We were going through a guardianship proceeding. His child's turning 18. It was one more thing where he felt like his child's being left behind. And I've been there. And I changed the conversation to be able to say, I completely understand how frustrated you must feel that you've been battling with school districts and you've been battling to get him everything that he needs. And now you feel like you're battling with the court. Yeah. Wow. You know, and I think being able to bring that personal experience to parents who feel like they've been struggling to get what their kids need for them, you know, gives me a little more understanding of my clients that maybe somebody who hasn't had the personal experience doesn't understand. Yeah. I mean, that personal experience just brings, you know, not only expertise, but it brings, uh, you know, empathy, um, and, and, and true compassion, you know, to what, what we do. Right. Um, there's so many different, you know, professions out there where people do something or advise people on things and situations, but there are situations that they've never been in themselves. Right. right? That's true. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's wonderful. Um, you know, I, I, I call the show estate planning nightmares and people often ask me, why do you call it that? And, you know, it, my, my, my smart butt answer to that is because I want to scare people, but nah, I don't really want to scare them, but I want to open their eyes because hearing stories, especially ones that aren't so pretty helps people. I think really to think about their own personal situation. And I think that it helps people to understand the realities of what, may happen 
if if we don't do some planning you know because so many people are like well you know i'll get to it i have time well <laughs> i'm glad you have the crystal ball because i don't um you know i don't know when my time is up so and i know you've seen a lot of the good and the bad and the ugly so would you be willing to share a, a story or two with our listeners that might uh be able to be relatable in their own lives sure um I think one of the most upsetting situations I've had is I'm working on a case now with a client and I've ha I happen to have known her for quite a while and she's a young mom. She's in her early thirties. She has, I think the kids are eight and six. Um, and her husband was in a union. So he got his job when he was 18 or 19 years old. And that's when he got his, you know, that's when he got his, his pension and his life insurance and his death benefits and all that stuff. That's when he signed up for all that stuff. And that's the last time he looked at those papers. And so he had not met his wife and he had not imagined his children at that time at 19 years old. And he made his brother his beneficiary. And, you know, 32 years old, they just bought their first house. They have little kids. They're busy with jobs. They're doing what most people at that age are doing, running around to soccer games, and he unexpectedly died. Oh. And um, never changed any of his beneficiaries. Oh, my goodness. And um, so as you find out as an estate planning attorney, money does funny things to people. And, you know, families don't always get along so great. And while... New York state law does, does require that some of that money go to the spouse. It does not require that all of that money go to the spouse, despite the beneficiary designations. And the brother is not giving that money to her. Oh. So here she is. She worked part-time and was raising the children because she, you know, that's what they decided as a married couple. And now she's losing her home because she doesn't have the life insurance. She doesn't have all the life insurance and she's only receiving part of the pension and she's not receiving the funds that would have been there to help her get over this crisis time and sort of get her feet on the ground. And, um, you know, she's having to sell her house and move in with her parents until she can sort of get settled on top of losing her husband, on top of her children losing their father. So oh. while, while him having a will, you know, it's an estate planning nightmare show, but while him having a will wouldn't have changed that, having a conversation with an estate planning attorney would have brought that to his attention. Oh, absolutely. Because Whenever updating I speak beneficiaries to my is so clients, critical. updating beneficiaries, we know what kind of life insurance do you have? What you know? What are your sources of income? How are we going to manage the crisis if one arises? That's part of the conversation. Wow. So the likely likelihood is the outcome would have been different had they thought to have that conversation. Well, yeah, that's amazing. I mean, you know, huge takeaway here, uh, folks. Um, if if you haven't reviewed your beneficiaries on life insurance, any retirement benefits that you may have, uh, you know, four hundred one k's, pensions, IRAs, those kind of things, review them. Make sure. I mean, you know, I talked to someone not that long ago, and we're having a conversation about beneficiaries. And the individual said, yeah, you know, I changed on my life insurance policy and all these kind of things. What they failed to do was change their beneficiary designation on the uh, employer paid group life insurance. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it was kind of eye opening. So let me ask this question because, well, I have, I, have, I have two thoughts and I'll, you know, keep my comments to myself regarding uh an in-law who doesn't care that this was an honest mistake and wouldn't help out my sister-in-law and my niece and nephew. Um, Cause we could have a whole conversation on, on that. Um, so life insurance in and of itself uh, typically is paid directly individual life insurance to name beneficiary. 
Yes. Um, that's still the case in New York. Is it the employer uh, sponsored benefits or the pensions that even if the beneficiary were the brother, the state will award some of it back to the to the to the spouse? She's entitled to some of the pension. And under the union rules, if I remember correctly, she was entitled to some of the death benefit, but not the entire thing. Mm, okay. Wow. Sad, sad story. Yeah. You know, <laughs> say I tell people all the time, I say, you know, life insurance is an amazing tool. Everyone should have it. I don't care who you are. Bill Gates has life insurance. He just has it for a completely different reason than he the rest have, of yes. all of us. <laughs> I think he has right? it for a different reason than most people. You're right. But um, but life insurance is only good if, number one, your family knows you have it. And number two, it's going to be paid out to whom you want it to be paid to. That's Otherwise, right. it creates a nightmare. So, well, my heart goes out to this uh, uh, this young lady, and I know you're still working with her, and I know you will do everything you can to see that her uh, and her family are taken care of. Well, the first thing we're doing is making sure she has an estate plan, and she Amen. has life insurance. So, we're taking Amen. care of the things that weren't taken care of. Yeah, yeah. Because when it <laughs> when there's only one left standing and you have children, you have to make sure that God forbid something happens to you, that the children will be taken care of and the funding will be available to take care of them, et cetera. So exactly. Wow. wow. Sad. So um so I know you have special needs uh children. I have a special need adult son. Um and I have a special or a supplemental needs trust um, that is designed to do specific things, which I'll let you speak to. But I knew you had mentioned to me earlier um, uh, a scenario where someone hadn't planned for a special needs child. Can you kind of share that uh, nightmare experience? Yeah, it, it, it's come up a few times. And, uh, you know, I mentioned to you, I'm working with another couple now that are similarly situated, but this couple I worked with in the past, and I worked with them for quite a while, um, they had a sizable estate and they had a, an adult disabled daughter. And they wanted to do an estate plan, but I don't, you know, it's sometimes you just don't know what makes people tick. Um, they would sometimes tell me they thought she was going to get well. And they would sometimes tell me they didn't think it was important that they thought she would be okay, but they really did not want to make special arrangements for her to prevent her from receiving their estate outright. And when I met them, she was receiving quite a few asset and income based benefits that if she lost her parents, she would be extremely reliant on to continue living her life. She was able to live independently because of the programs and benefits she was receiving. And those benefits she were receiving were dependent upon her income and assets being below qualifying levels. And, uh, and it's still uh, 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 someone who's receiving those kind of benefits can never have more than what, $2,000 in they're their... very low. Yes, they're yeah. very low. And um, and I, I, I told the parents how important it was that should they pass, this sizable estate would have to go into a supplemental needs trust for her, that she could not receive the, this, this estate outright. And they really were very resistant to the idea. And... Mm -hmm. They were on the young side and I, I think they thought nothing would ever happen to, they were too young for something to happen. They would be there to take care of her. I, you know, I really, like I said, sometimes you can't figure out what's making people tick. And <clears throat> we did a, a regular revocable living trust, like so many people do. And, you know, they had wills and but they didn't make any special provisions for their daughter. And the mom got sick not too long after 
we did their estate plan and I continued to talk to them. And, you know, I send out newsletters and, you know, sometimes they're directly pointed at a particular client who's, you know, please read this about special needs planning. And, um, but she died uh, about a year after we finished her estate plan. And then mm. shortly after that, the father got into a car accident and also died. So, oh their daughter received their entire estate and lost her benefits. And fortunately, the family reached out to me because what we were able to do was bring a guardianship proceeding and get a guardianship, a family member guardian appointed, and that person was able to create that trust. And we were able to prevent the assets from moving directly to the daughter. So we were able to preserve what she was receiving because we were able to act quickly. But that is that doesn't happen very yeah. often, you know, that you have a family who sort of understands and is able to act quickly enough where you can sort of mop up the mess. Um, you know, guardianship can take a long time. Sometimes people don't understand that that might be the fix. And, you know, fortunately, in this young woman's case, we were able to repair the damage and sort of stop the, what would have really been, because she would not have been able to manage the amounts of money that she was receiving. She would have lost, she, she was in um, supportive housing. She would have lost that. Yeah. Um, and it really would have been, it would have been a crisis situation for her. Oh yeah, totally. And yeah, thankfully, like you say, you had family that understood things and could move quickly and you could, could act and, and avoid, uh, this, this terrible situation. But of course that costs family money. Uh, well, a guardianship's you know, a very expensive proposition. So it did cost the estate quite a bit of money to do that. Yes. Right. Whereas, uh, supplemental needs trust on the front end, all the assets would pass into the trust exactly. for that. And we would have already named uh, trustees That's and right. successor trustees and people who could handle the money and, and manage things. So it would have saved, uh, you know, the estate money, obviously. Uh, it would have saved the estate money and it would have caught, it would have saved a tremendous amount of um, belly aches, uh, <laughs> stress, sleepless nights, and yes, all of those things. Wow. Oh, that's why I love this show so much. I just love talking to interesting people and sharing stories. And, and again, it's not to scare people. It's to get people to think about their own situation or people you know. Maybe, maybe a listener has a, a brother or sister who has a special needs child. And, you know prompt that phone call that you ought to make anyway and touch base and just say, Hey, um, you, know, you should listen to this podcast. Do you guys have an estate plan in place for so-and-so? Um, it's important I, stuff. So I think, I think a few things happen. I think, especially I can speak as, you know, as a special needs parent myself, it's overwhelming. There's so much fear and you're so busy. You know, I said, I said earlier, like we were, we were constant with physical therapy, occupation. <laughs> we were so, we were everywhere all the time. And the thought of like also having to see an attorney and also having to, you know, see a finance and also having to figure this out was so overwhelming, you know, that it's sort of the last thought. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people is it ends up getting back burnered and back burnered. And it's one more overwhelming thought. And, you know, a show like this is great because if somebody hears it, maybe it gets front burnered and maybe they find a resource that's easy to contact. I mean, it's important to me that I make these things easy for people so it doesn't feel so overwhelming. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I know that uh, with all the estate planning attorneys that uh, that I know and work with around the country and stuff, you all do a wonderful job of uh, explaining it to people so they know what it does. Um, you know, and there's there's no, well, I just got this great estate plan. I have no idea what it says, right? Um, 
you know, and, uh, and it's designed for each individual's own specific needs, because you all ask the right questions, you know, what do you want to have happen in this situation? What about this situation? Um, uh, you know, I recently, uh, interviewed a gentleman who, uh, uh, has a phrase that I really love. He said, understand that, uh, fair does not necessarily mean equal when dividing up uh, certain certain property or assets at the end of the day. And uh, so, yeah, it's interesting. So let me ask you this, Jackie. Um, what's what's your best advice that you, you'd give somebody or, or give people relative to estate planning? You know, I think in the spirit of trying to simplify, I think people get lost in the language. What's an estate plan? Do I have to own a house? Does that mean I have to have a mansion? What is it? You know, estate planning is nothing more than, than making decisions yourself. That's really what it comes down to is you don't want somebody else making these important decisions for you. You want to make the decisions for yourself. So when you think about what decisions I'm asking you to make, who do you want taking care of your children? Right? If, if, you, if the worst thing ha that you can imagine happens and you pass away and you leave those children, who do you want managing the money that you've left behind to take care of them, right? If you're in an accident, who do you want making medical decisions for you? You know, who, who, do, you, who do you trust enough to go to the bank for you if you can't? Mm -hmm. You know, so... It's really a series of, of decisions that if you ask it like that, most people don't want a, a judge or somebody who doesn't know them making those kinds of decisions for them. And yet so many people don't act on what is really a decision-making process. And, yeah, I love the way you put that. And um, the other thing I tell people, because so many of my clients get stuck on the decisions oh we don't know who's going to be the guard we don't know and i say pick imperfectly i'd rather you pick imperfectly than not pick at all let's yeah. put something in place and you can change it next year and you can change it in two years and you can change it in five years but i'd rather you pick imperfectly but pick yeah. than do nothing at all yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, you know, it uh, it's about making your decisions, right? It's like, um, you know, you ask them, do you have an estate plan? And they say, no. Well, yeah, you do, actually. Uh, it's the state that you yes. live in. <laughs> That's your estate plan. You don't want it to be that. And, you know, again, you know, estate is just, you know, when you think of, you know, estate, you think of, oh, it's all these rich people and stuff. And what I always say, people, estate is just a fancy word for stuff. And we it's all have stuff. stuff. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's called stuff planning. And more people will probably say, oh, I get it. I'm going to do that. Plan for my stuff. Uh, awesome. Well, hey, we're bumping up on our time. Uh, Jackie, thank you so much, uh, you know, for joining me here today. It's been wonderful to hear about your journey, your story, the innovative work that you're doing in the field of estate planning. And uh, how can our audience connect with you if they have any questions in general, want to review their estate plan? So my office is in Garden City. You can call me at 516-217-9200. You can email me at Jackie at Jackie Cara Law. That's J-A-C-K-I-E-C-A-R-A. -E or you can check out my website, www.JackieCaraLaw.com. Awesome. That's great. And please, folks, feel free to reach out to Jackie if you have any questions or concerns. Um, to make it very easy, I'm going to include all of her contact information. Uh, below in the show notes so you can reach out to her that way as well and a big thanks to you our audience uh, for joining us again i hope you found our discussion to be insightful educational and helpful and as always please remember your life is your legacy so plan ahead and make it a great day <laughs>